Hi everyone, this is Danielle Galvan Gomez from the William Grantsdale Art Center, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make drawing tools out of things from your everyday life. The goal from today's lesson is to be creative about the tools we're using, and to do what we call mark making. Mark making is a term used to describe the different lines, patterns, and textures we create in a piece of art. It applies to any material and any surface, not only paint on canvas or pencil on paper. Here are some examples of work that includes varied mark making. Here you see a close up. Notice all the different kinds of marks and expressive lines and textures that we see in this work. And as you pick objects for your drawing materials, think about and consider what kind of mark or expressive line or texture will they make in your drawing and how can you use it in conversation and with the rest of the marks that you're making as well. Lots of artists use different tools to create their work, different than the traditional media that we're used to using. Here's the artist Ed Clark using a push broom to make a painting. In this video from the Perez Art Museum Miami, Ed Clark talks more specifically about one of his paintings and this technique. Notice all the different types of marks in this video. I've always been an artist, I think. I've been everywhere, especially Paris for years. I've traveled everywhere with my art. And you see, uh, what, what makes my work a little different don't mean I'm trying to say better than everyone. I paint with a broom, and I've been doing that for years now, you know, so you see that big Broom. Well, I was living in Paris, and I was in a place right in the middle of Paris, you know, Montparnasse, and all of a sudden I, I needed, you know, not a wide brush. So then I decided, but I wanted, not just because of that, but I wanted to get something. I went in and got the janitor's broom, right, you know. I'm not thinking about being a janitor, but they had the whiff, and I started using it right away. I don't think anyone did that other than me. I'm not thinking then, right? I just improvise right away. I see that pails of color here, you know, like that, and take that broom and sweep through it. The moment I take the broom, that gives a different kind of energy. You don't have to have different kind of energy. You could be a great genius without doing it, but I had that, you know, to do that, sweep that big broom through it. But when I get into painting like that, you don't get into to something that you understand, right? You just let it go. Think about how you can use improvisation to make interesting and new drawing techniques like Ed Clark. Another contemporary artist who creates marks and drawings in creative and interesting ways is the contemporary artist Kai Go Chang. Let's watch how he makes this drawing. <laughs> What you just saw was an explosion of fireworks and gunpowder that the artist rigged and used to create an art piece. In this case, the art piece is two things the explosion of watching it being made, the actual performance, and the finished drawing at the end, which you see here. Consider how these two artists have used mark making in unique and special ways in their work. As you begin to construct your own examples of creative ways to construct drawings and drawing tools, 
Think about how you can make stencils, how you can make textures, rubbings, patterns, how you can create new and interesting lines and marks using everyday objects. As you go about your day, think about what kind of mark an object might make if you used it on paper. This is how artists are innovative and make new and interesting work. Part of it is by exploring the idea of mark making and actually creating and using new tools in their work. The two artists that I shared with you today are well known for this. And think about how in your own work, as you're creating your own images, how the tools that you use can help define and tell a story in the work that you're making. Even if you're just making lines, even if the work you're making is abstract or doesn't have a narrative subject. Now I'm going to walk you through a few examples. So I started by going into my garden and I pulled out anything that had any pigment, meaning, you know, a bright color, and I pulled out some old leaves on the ground, anything that I could feel that had texture, anything that I found really interesting. Um, so this is the stuff that I gathered from my garden. There's some Japanese maple, camellia, bougainvillea. These are all um, plants that are blooming right now, that are in season. And so I pulled them out for our first project. Um, so what I did is I put some paper down, and I'm going to show you how to transfer the pigment from these plants this is a bougainvillea, to our paper. And what you're going to need for this is some paper and um, a hammer or something that um, will help you put pressure on the plant. So you can use a rolling pin from the kitchen. You can use, um, I'll show you another example of something I use. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm using a hammer to beat down on the um, bougainvillea. And you can already see it bleeding through through the paper. So the plant's pigment is actually coming through the paper. I got an old salt can um, also to try to help get the color out. And I'm not using any drawing tools on this. I'm not using a pencil or um, paint. This is all just from the plant, from crushing the plant. This is how I'm getting the color onto the page. I'm not using anything that's traditional. I'm rolling my um, hammer here to try to get a little bit more color. Try to be creative with, with how you move things and trying different things. Try different things out. So you can see that the bougainvillea plant is crushed and that you have the imprint perfectly on the paper. Um, I tr You can do this with other plants as well. This is an, a um, Black Eyed Susan flower so I already I did that with this flower as well I did the same process I put it directly under the paper and then I hammered it to get that orangey pigment and I did this right after it rained so all the plants were a little bit wet I dried them off a little bit but I let them be a little bit wet um, so that they would bleed into the paper easier but try it both ways try it with plants that are dried try it, dry it with plants that are fresh and see what different what different outcomes you get using different tools. Um, the other thing you can do is etchings. So this is a Japanese maple, leaves from a Japanese maple. And I'm gonna go ahead and transfer, um, this time I'm gonna be using a pencil, the shapes and lines and texture directly from this plant onto my paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the Japanese maple under my paper um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get so now it's underneath there's nothing else it's just the Japanese paper, um, maple on the paper smooth it out I'm gonna make sure everything's down everything's smooth um, and you should be able through the paper to feel like the veins of the leaf and I got some charcoal and I'm actually right down the line that's the stem the darkest line that you see there is the stem and that's because it's the most raised part of the plant and now you can start seeing the star shapes of the leaves all the veins of the leaf are coming out and then there's our plant underneath but the drawing that we get from it is so interesting and beautiful and dynamic and we did it directly from the plant which is great um, another way that you can do it is also drawing over the leaf you can 
I, I used a lighter touch for the last one. This one I'm pressing really hard with some graphite, which is um, a kind of pencil. And as you can see, the movement, you're starting to see the plant leaves, the texture, the pattern from the plant. Um, you're starting to see that emerge. This is also um, the leaf of the Japanese maple. The pressure from um, us pressing down from it being directly underneath the paper is, is bringing out. So you can do this on anything that you find. So if you find a book that has an interesting texture, if you find something on the ground, you know, a piece of wood or, or anything that has an interesting texture that has, um, especially something that has a hard surface, a piece of jewelry, you can use your paper and, pe and pencil and any other drawing material you have to get that and transfer it onto your paper using this rubbing method. You can see you can really see a lot of the detail that transfers through um, and even <laughs> this is a red maple and you can actually see it on the page that it's rubbed off a little bit and like I said you could do it with anything I, I did it with my hammer there's some writing on my hammer that came through I did the same technique and you can see the, the pattern as well um, I also did it with this um, like wood design that's in my house on a mirror that I have and you could see, you know, I'm, I'm moving my pencil really, really fast, but you don't have to move too fast. And experiment with how you're holding what you're drawing. Like, are you going to hold it so that it's really, you're getting a really dark color and it's um, putting a lot of pressure? Or are you going to have a lighter touch? Experiment with how you're holding. You can also kind of use, I used a lemon as well to use pressing. I put ink on this lemon. And just by pressing, you can create a unique texture, a unique shape. Um, and you're actually drawing with just a piece of fruit, which is really, really cool. I used a, a tiny lemon that I had left over, but also think about other household objects, like um, a toothbrush, for example. This is an old toothbrush I had. I just pulled it out. I put some ink on it, and I can use it to make a drawing just like I would um, a paintbrush, but it actually has a bristle and um, that's really different from that of a paintbrush. So I can experiment with, right there, some dry brushing. So my brush was really dry, and I could put some, um, it creates a different texture than when it's wet. So you can see a mix of wet and dry brush in this, and think about how that looks to you and, and how you want to experiment in your own pieces. Um, you can also think about using it on a larger scale. So I actually put, I have a new puppy, so I put some puppy pads down so I could do a larger drawing outside, and it can soak up any water. I put down some butcher paper, and this is going to be my, my canvas, my drawing space. And I got a broom, and I mixed some ink and water in an old Tupperware. And I can experiment with making shapes, and I can have a better gesture. Gesture is like the movement of my hands and body with the tool that I'm using to make a mark. That's what a gesture is. So I can have different kinds of gestures. I can have different kinds of marks. Right here, I'm shaking. I'm shaking the um, the broom, and that creates kind of a splatter. I can I can move it. I can rub it like you would with when I was using the um, toothbrush. You can really experiment with how much water you keep on the brush. So if I have more, if I let the water kind of drain before um, I use it, it has less of a wet mark right here. These are really wet, dripping, dark ink marks. But there are times too when you can make a mark that is dry and it will have a really different texture. You can try making kind of swirls. I was making curved marks with it because the broom bristles move and they have um, the ability to be bent and when you have something that isn't so rigid you can play around with how you're making marks in this way. So keep experiment. So if you're working, if you have the room to really make work on this scale, meaning the size, how big this is, I mean, I'm using a really big tool. Try, try it with a mop, try it with, um, I found an old branch that had fallen down in my backyard, try it with those leaves, dip that in some ink, and just try making different kinds of marks. See, this is when I had a lot of ink, I had a lot of water, and it made a really wet, dark mark that's really different from these dry marks, these drier marks, when I had less water on my on my um, 
broom. So really look at the detail. Look at how varied and different something so abstract can be. So go ahead and start looking at what you have in your house, what materials you have, and see what you can actually turn into an impromptu, um, meaning like an improvised drawing tool, what Ed Clark was talking about in his video. And when you're done, don't forget to clean up your space and get ready for your next project. Thank you for watching this video. Please check out William Grant Still Art Center social media pages for more videos on art and music that you can do at home. And I'll see you next week with another project. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.